For this session, we're going to have a look at how we might modify the EPUB once we've created it with InDesign by editing or making modifications to the CSS, that is the cascading style sheets that InDesign has created for us. Okay, let's just remind ourselves of what we've got. We've got the Midsummer Night's Dream in InDesign, two files uh, in a book panel. Uh, we're also using the articles to arrange the content. Let's just make sure that we have that set up correctly. So we're not, we've unticked half title and the uh, table of contents on the page. Uh, that's how I've left it at the moment. So let's, uh, let's now export this and see what results we get. Export the book to EPUB. Okay, I'm going to put this in here, overwrite an existing one. Uh, so we've got this already set up. I don't need to change anything here. I'm simply uh, editing this as EPUB3 and it's going to be the same as the articles panel. Let's just have a look at the results of this. Okay, so we've got our frontispiece, uh, we've got our title, we've got um, copyright and so forth. Now let's just make a few comparisons. We've got these blocks uh, underneath this text here which clearly isn't right. Uh, and here's the play now uh, and that's all, all seems to be alright. Let's just make a few comparisons though between what we have here on the page and what we have uh, on the InDesign. Now that, that there is uh, okay. We're okay with that. Uh, let's just move through a little bit further. Now this is our first problem. Here we see in our introduction uh, we've got the text um, that looks all pretty reasonable but we have these lines underneath the headings but we don't have it in our uh, our, our uh, ebook so that's the first problem let's look at it see what else we've got that's going on here okay this is another problem here we've actually created a background to this um, by using, well I should say we've, we've created a line to the left of each of these block quotes um, and we've done that by using a, a background uh, and then offsetting it both uh, left and right. I, I won't go into the details but that's the, the reason that we've got some, that working there but it doesn't get carried across uh, to our ebook. Let's just have another look in here. Uh, let's go to the play. Now for the play itself uh, this is all pretty good, uh, but what we've got here is a, again a, a bold or a line underneath, a, a, a border underneath uh, the beginning of the act. So we put that in in InDesign hoping that we would get that result, but we haven't. That's the difference. Okay, so let's have a look and see how we might make a few of these modifications. Um, but first of all, what we need to know is that we have actually uh, made sure that something like this, which is uh, the act style, paragraph style, uh, when we e export the tagging that we actually get in the EPUB an H1 tag with a class name of act. So as long as we can actually target that within our CSS, then we know that we can make that modification. Uh, so I'm just going to now go into my EPUB uh, let's just bring this over here. Now this is the one that we've just created, Midsummer EPUB. Uh, and what I'm going to do is to open that or create a folder from that because that's a package. I'm going to create a folder by dragging that into my uh, script which I've got in my finder. This is just a message to tell me what it's done. It's created a folder. There's my folder. Uh, and I'm now going to drag this or open this whole folder uh, with Atom. So as you can see we have uh, all of our files now in a an application called Atom so we can see each of the uh, of the items so let me just show you one of these uh, this will be one of the play um, files with the CSS I, I, I should beg your pardon the, the HTML uh, here we are the verses here uh, you can also see this is the beginning, this is a scene. Uh, let's have a look at another one here. This is the act here, act. There's an act starting here um, with some prose and so forth. Okay, the CSS that we've got is in this file here. Uh, and if we scroll down, uh, we should find the act. 
we are. There's the act. That's the whole block there is to do with the act, uh, telling us what font to use, what font size and so forth. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add to this um, act, I'm going to add to it a, a line which is going to say border bottom four pixels solid and we'll choose a color I'm going to make sure that this is a, this is just a gray actually with a hexadecimal value okay so that's me using hexadecimal value just approximately getting that color um, I've also got some other things uh, in here that I can do, but I'm just going to leave it like that for the moment. But what I need to do is to copy that. I'm copying that whole block, although it's only that one thing that I'm actually changing. Um, and I'm going to make a new file, which is going to be called dream, which is going to be called dream dot. CSS, so I'm now saving this and I'm saving this uh, outside the folder. I don't want to keep it inside the folder, uh, but this is my own version of the CSS or my the, the beginnings of that. Okay, so we just leave that open for the moment and now let's go back to our uh, ID generated um, document here. Uh, and we can now have a look at a few other things that we want to address. So if I can just remind you again of what they are. Okay, so here we have, uh, for example, the header 2, which has a, a line underneath it. And that doesn't come out in our... Uh, in our in, in design generated one. Uh, so I'm looking for a header header 2. Here we are, we found it. And again, I'm going to put a border underneath that of three pixels solid. And once again, add the color that I need. This time, again, another gray. We can use RGB or hexadecimal values, doesn't really matter. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that whole bo block. I think I was in the wrong place there. Let's just make sure I don't get too much. Put that back in there. Now we need to also have a look at one or two other things here. Um, so let's look at our introduction text. And what we're actually looking for is the block quote. Here we have, uh, this is a block quote paragraph. So that's what we're actually looking for in our CSS. And here we have uh, a background color here. This is what we want to remove. So this background color should be none or white. Actually, it shouldn't be anything at all. It should be transparent or none. Because it, it, it doesn't need any color at all. Um, but what we do need is we need a left hand border and this time we need a two pixels solid And again, we need to copy that and add it to our own CSS. 
Okay, now these are just some of the things that we can do. There are other things that we might want to do, but that's just uh, that's just solve that one for the moment. Okay, let's put that out of the way, and we're now going back to InDesign because now we're going to export this again, putting it in here, overwriting it. But this time we're going to add our own style sheet, which we've created. Otherwise, everything else is the same. And we're now going to have a look and see what that's achieved. OK, so here's the line under our text. Um, here are our uh, block quotes. Now, we, are, we it looks like to me we need to offset this a little bit um, by putting some padding to the left. Uh, but again, we can do that in our CSS for the next time that we export. And going on to our play, again, we've got a line underneath, although it looks like it could be uh, a little bit thicker. OK, so that's the general principle. We have now our CSS here, our own copy of the CSS, and we can just keep modifying this, adding things to it. Uh, and what we'll find is that the uh, the, the CSS is, our CSS has been added after uh, the CSS that InDesign in has created. See here, if we look at the, uh, any one of these files now, you'll see that we now have our dream is added after the two previous uh, InDesign generated CSS files.